Hello, this video I'm going to cover the 5.1 surround panner functionality. So this is part of the 5.1 surround mixing series of videos that I've done recently and someone brought up a good, a good question about the panner. So um, let's do it. The panner, it, the surround panner becomes available when you have a mono or a stereo audio track or aux track uh, or instrument track for that matter and you select a 5.1 output. So here's, I, I've got a dialog track here and the output is selected for the dialog 5.1 bus. Now if I set um, a stereo bus, of course I'm gonna get a stereo panner. So the first thing you gotta do is have uh, a 5.1 bus or a 5.1 output in your session so that you can set your track output to that output or bus. So I'm going to set this back to the dialog 51 bus. And you'll see that I have the um the surround panner there and I can actually grab the puck right from within that window of course and I can make my panning moves. I'm going to um enable my my trusty signal generator here so you can see that, right? So I, I can actually pan it from this little view, which is sometimes handy. I just want to move things around. I can see that the routing of that or the panning of that signal generator on this mono track set to a 5.1 output is being fed to this um, dialog uh, 5.1 aux track as my sub mix, right? So anything that I do here, I will see the result of that panning in that track to the left, all right? But better yet, let's get into the panner. So on the output selector button, all the way to the right is the output window button. I'm gonna click on that, pull up the panner. This is an enlarged view of the panner, of course, and it's as if you were looking down on your 5-1 room from the top down, right? So uh, up across the top of this, this uh, five one field is my my left channel, my center, my right, my right surround, my left surround, and my LFE channel is over here on the right. So I have a separate volume for my LFE channel, and um, which is a good thing. That's part of the five dot one. Okay, so how does this work? Well, I can easily pan this anywhere I want to. That's pretty easy. Or if I want the sound to come out a particular speaker only, I can click on that speaker and it will take me directly there, right? And I'm looking at the, the channel to the left that shows what my panning is doing, right? Based with that on that signal generator. And of course, I can take it anywhere I want. I can grab the knobs to do the same thing, right? Now, what you saw now is that it just kicked into a different mode. So there's a few different modes available for the panner. The default one is XY mode, which means that I can click and drag anywhere within that field and move the panner wherever I want. And you'll notice, if I, regardless of where I have the mouse in that window, when I click, it moves the mouse to the puck. And this is a good thing because you don't want whatever it is you're panning to jump and you don't want to have to try to track your mouse to the puck, uh, the mouse will automatically jump to the puck. And when you start mixing and doing um, automation punch-ins in Pro Tools with your mix, you'll see how, why this is a good thing. So even though my puck may be over here and my mouse all the way to the right, when I click down, my mouse automatically moves to the puck. The puck does not move. That's a good thing. All right, and of course I can move it. And this follows all of the automation, right? So if I want to put this track in automation touch or latch mode all of the same moves will be written as automation right okay so that's the XY mode the three knob mode allows me to be a little more specific so maybe I want to take a signal directly from the left speaker and I want to route it directly to the right speaker right so um, I'm in uh, three knob mode sorry and this way I can set my direction for this element in my session to go directly from one speaker to the next. Now, one thing to point out here is when I'm all the way in the front left corner, as I am right now, you'll see that only audio is coming out of the left channel. As I route this back, it's only gonna come out of the left front and the right rear because that's where I've designated my, my three dob path to be. Now, if I did this same thing in uh, XY mode, you'll notice a little different behavior, right? So if I take this um, puck and I go all the way to the left and I just follow the same path from the left front all the way to the right rear, you'll notice that the sound is gonna hit a bunch of different speakers 
on its way back there. And sometimes you may want this, right? You want this signal to um, hit a bunch of speakers as it goes back and forth. Other times you may want it to be very specific. I want left channel only and right rear only. And this would be one example where the three knob mode would be very handy. Now I can take this and move the, the line to designate what speakers I want it to land on. Maybe I want it to go in the middle and I want the front center channel to go uh, from center all the way to the two surrounds, I can do that and I'll grab the knob and you'll notice that it hits the two speakers equally. So that's three knob mode. Um, let's see, what else is there? Divergence editing, I'm gonna come back to that in one second. Auto glide, this is handy. Um, if you want a puck to move to another location based on your mouse location, but you don't want it to be abrupt, I don't want it to jump immediately, I want it to uh, gracefully transfer from one location to the another. I'm gonna start play back here and my puck is currently in the center and I'll click here and it will follow wherever I'm clicking. I'm clicking at these different locations so it will allow me to kind of jump around and move it. Now the, the time that it takes to get from one location to the next is a preference that you can uh, edit if you'd like. If you go into the Pro Tools preferences, the mixing tab and set your auto glide time, auto glide time, higher or lower it's uh, set to 250 I'm gonna go to 1000 milliseconds which is one second and you'll notice that it moves a little bit slower it'll take one second for the puck to get from the location that it's parked at to the new location and of course you can edit that how you choose alright so let's go back to divergence divergence is an interesting thing so what you have to do is picture yourself watching your finished product uh, in a large theater or in a large room. And the idea behind divergence is to enable your listeners to be able to see uh, or hear something that has pa been panned all the way to the hard left, but maybe they're sitting all the way to the right. And once again, think about a large theater and the width of the theater may be, I don't know, 100 feet, who knows, whatever the, the size is. What the divergence does is, I'm gonna take this um, center channel here and keep an eye on my, my signal generator. Here's the tone, it's coming out of the, the, the center channel only. Now, if I were to pan this all the way to the hard left, someone sitting to the far right may not be able to hear that audio coming out of the left channel. And again, I'm thinking of a large room here. So what divergence does is it allows you to kind of cheat or, or, or blend that left pan audio into the center or into the right, right? So if I go to divergence mode and I kind of collapse or, or close the convergence on the front, you'll see that the square in the middle, but look at the metering and see how the signal uh, is previously in the left channel only. As I take the divergence down, it bleeds it into the center and the right channel. And in this example, I've got it, you know, a little bit heavier in the left, but it bleeds over into the center in the right channel as well. Now, if I take it all the way up, or I should say all the way down, I completely set my front divergence to zero. Anything that I pan across the front is going to go out all three speakers. Probably not something you wanna do very often, but you can do it. So, you know, a hard or wide open divergence or closed divergence, whatever you wanna call it, kind of kills your, your panning ability. So I probably wouldn't wanna do that, but I there may be instances where I wanna use a slight amount of divergence to, to pull that in here. Now, in this example, um, I've got my element panned hard left, and by uh, enabling the front divergence or taking it down, um, I'm bleeding into the, to the center and right. Maybe I don't want it to go into the center channel, so what I'll do is I'll take the center percentage all the way down and keep an eye on the center speaker there. I'm effectively removing it from the five one panner, right? So now as I uh, tweak the, the divergence, I can kind of tweak, tweak that hard or cheat that hard left panned audio 
into the right side only without it landing into the center channel, which might be a little more uh, realistic uh, use of this, right? I want to set that to zero. And that way, none of this signal is going into the center channel, but just a little bit based on how much I tweak this divergence will go into the, to the right. So that's one example of why you might want to use divergence. Now, this is the front divergence. There's also rear divergence. So I could say uh, something like, okay, if I take this center channel and I take it all the way back, regardless of where I put it on the left or right side in my surround speakers, it's going to come out equally uh, loud on both the, the left and the right. Something you may want to do. I'll take that back up. And then, of course, the front to back, too. So I have the ability to kind of close that divergence as well. So if I take all of these and close them, or <laughs> I don't know what you correctly call them, open or close them, um, I've taken the divergence all the way to zero on the front, the rear, and the front to rear. And basically, I, I've just disabled my panning. Anywhere I put the panner, the, um, it's coming out equally all channels, except for the center channel because I, I removed that, but I'll put it back in. And uh, I can't think of a good example why I would might want to do this, but I'm sure there is. Someone will come up with a good example. But this is what the divergence function does. So I'd say use a, a little bit of divergence can be quite helpful. A lot of divergence um, or killing it all together will, will potentially uh, remove your ability to pan. So far, I've been dealing with a mono audio track routed to a 5.1 output. Same thing applies to a stereo uh, audio track or aux track or instrument track. I'm going to bring one of those up right now. And this is a music audio track. And I'm going to bring up the panner. And you'll notice that it has uh, two panners since it's an, uh, a stereo audio track. It is also routed to a 5.1 output. And the controls are largely the same as they are in the mono track. Uh, but you'll notice there's a slight difference because I have two panners, right? So I have the ability to link the two sides of this audio track so that if I grab one side, I can take it and pan it and the right side or vice versa. I can grab the right side and the left side will follow uh, and do it all, do whatever it is I'm doing to one side to the other, which is oftentimes something you'd want to do. And that's enabled by these uh, link buttons up here. So if I turn that link off, I can have independent control of the left from the right and vice versa. But if it's a stereo music bed or a music file that I want to pan, I'll probably want to link it. You don't have to. And I have a couple of the parameters uh, link enabled, right? So that if I grab one side, they go back together. If I go into the middle, they follow each other. And all of these moves will be recorded as automation if I just put the track into any of the automation write modes, touch, latch, write, whatever, touch, latch, whatever the case may be. So any moves I make while in an automation write mode will be um, will be recorded. So everything else uh, remains pretty much the same here. And whoop, let me turn the signal generator off on the dialogue over here and I'll turn it on in the music and I'll do some panning. So one other thing I forgot to show earlier on the mono is the ability to expand and see the output. So down in the lower right corner here, I can pop this open. And this is showing the output of this track. The meter in the middle is showing me the signal generator input coming into the track. And then the output little panel that opens up shows me uh, basically what my aux track is showing too, how my panner is affecting the output of um, this particular track. Another way to view where your audio is being panned. Okay, so here uh, is another example where this center channel becomes kind of important, right? So typically center channel in TV and film is um, not 
hard rule, but dialogue lives there more more often than not. But I often want to put music into the to the front channels too, and I don't want my music to bleed into the center channel. So this is another example of where the center percentage becomes handy, right? So I can take down the center percentage and um, and get rid of that center channel. It's effectively gone out of my 5-1 panner. So now if I pan this anywhere I want to, uh, it should not go into the center channel. Oops, there's a, still one. Let me set that to zero, all the way down. Now if I pan this wherever I want, and I'm looking at the meters there, it n the music will never go into that center speaker, which is kind of handy. I can clear out that space in the center channel for my dialogue. And all of the other modes that we, sh we talked about in the mono uh, surround panner apply here as well. XY, three knob, divergence, and auto glide. All of those are the same here. So this is um, an example of a stereo panner. So there's a, um, a mono surround panner, there's a stereo surround panner, and they live only on a mono or a stereo track. If you have a multi-channel track like this aux track, for example, I, I cannot put a surround panner on a multi-channel uh, track other than stereo. So mono and stereo tracks only for um, surround panners. Hopefully this helps.